Hello, this is part three of the reef automation reef tank series. I'm going to show you a couple more things that I'm doing with my reef tank, some automation things I'm doing. Um, also get into more of the nitty gritty of how things work and how they work together. Uh, if you haven't watched uh, part one or part two, please go ahead before you watch this. Um, it'll kind of explain what I'm going to go over in this video. So anyways, let's get started. So in the last video, I went over my manifold, how the manifold works, but I'm going to go over how my calcium reactor works. Um, a lot of people have been interested in my calcium reactor setup. So I'm going to first go over the calcium reactor setup and I'm going to go over some of my dosing that I do. So the calcium reactor here is going into my refugium. That's what this tube is right here. And it goes all the way around and wraps around to the output of the, they call this the valve module. If you look on the lower right, that says affluent to tank. If you look at the top, it says affluent from reactor. Now the white goes to the sump and the red comes back around to the top of the lid. It goes onto the rightmost port of the lid. There is then an additional yellow wire, which I'll try to get here. You'll see there's a, little, a yellow wire, and that yellow wire comes down to the front of the reactor itself, right there. And then the other yellow wire comes to where it says CO2 to reactor, right there. And then the bottom where it says CO2 in goes to the CO2 itself. Now how this basically works, and it took me a long time to figure out, is first off, you have a countdown timer on the reactor. And it counts down depending on how much alkalinity you actually need to put into the tank. So right now it's at 220 and it'll keep going down. Once that hits zero, it's going to turn on the valve that's inside the valve module. And depending on your top number, which mine is set to two. So if I go to set, you'll see mine is set to two. 635 right now, which means it's going to turn on for two seconds and then it's going to turn off. So it turns on for two seconds and then it starts to count down from 625 or whatever your number is. For me, that is what I'm currently set at to keep my alkalinity stable. That is fully adjustable to whatever meets your particular needs in your tank. So that's how the calcium reactor works, is there's also a T here that I did for the calcium reactor. This is so I can purge any of the air if I ever need to. So that's why there's a T here. And then I have another T here in case I ever need to drain the calcium reactor, I can just hook up an RO line and drain it. So inside there is a float valve, which you can see right here. Once that float valve goes down from the water and the CO2 mixture, it turns off the CO2. Once that water, or I'm sorry, once that float valve switch gets triggered by the amount of water that's inside compared to CO2, it then triggers the CO2 to give it more CO2. So that is how the automatic calcium reactor works. The only thing that I have to plug in is the recirculating pump, which is right here, and the reactor I'm sorry, and the controller. So let's say the alkalinity was to get too high. I can then just kill the controller while keeping the water going right here through the um, recirculating pump. Now what I did was I also added a solenoid back here. That solenoid shuts off whenever my return shuts off. So that way nothing from the reactor can back feed into my system which unfortunately in my system it was back feeding. So again, the solenoid closes whenever my return system shuts off. So that way the reactor maintains its water level and maintains um, the pH in my tank without back feeding. Um, I have a leak sensor back there on my left side. It's way back in the corner there. On the right side, I have another leak sensor which uh, I'll try to show you. It's sitting way back there. And if you'll notice, I also have an air pump. 
So during the night, I actually do the bubbling method. If you haven't heard of the bubbling method, you can go online and there's plenty of reasons and videos why you should be doing it. But basically I have this bubble every night and I have a little wooden air stone right there by my return to do the bubbling method. So that's why I have a, a, a air, uh, air pump right there. So that's used for the bubbling method. You'll see all of my dose lines come in through this hole, which we're gonna go through next, which comes into this cabinet. And in this cabinet, I'm dosing um, the Tropic Marin trace elements. I'm dosing the amino power by two little fishies. And I'm also dosing Fido. I had a whole video on me dosing Fido. So if you go check my other video about dosing Fido, you can learn how to use this system and dose Fido. That's all going through my two dose systems right here. And then my ozone generator is right up here. I know the ozone is working when I have a light on the right side. When you don't have a light, that means you need to replace it. This is a bulb or light driven ozone system. Underneath all this is where I have my chiller. And again, I showed you the pipes that feed the chiller, which are these two black pipes, one being from my manifold and one going up to the return. I also have a battery backup below here. My battery backup is plugged into my EB-8, which is hiding behind my panel back here. That EB-8 then powers certain devices that I have programmed to turn off and on depending on the power, which I'm gonna explain in another video how to do power management. So I have a couple different modules in here. I have my WXM, I have my leak, my leak detector, I have another FMM, and then I have my one link, which powers my Trident, which powers my two dose, because I have an older style EB-8. Above that, I have my control system, which is an iPad used by launch port. And I will show you how that works. So all it is is just power that I ran up and below into a hole here, which then gets plugged in back behind this panel where all my power is. The launch port is really nice because if I ever need to remove it, I can just remove it. It's just a magnetic device and it's quite strong. So you don't have to worry about it ever falling. And then right above, I just have another cabinet here for miscellaneous items. And that's basically how it works. Now, another interesting feature that I have is my chiller has a fan as well. If I go into my laundry room, I have a fan that fans out the hot air from my chiller right into my laundry room. And that's how I'm able to keep my chiller and my garage nice and cool, even though I do have air conditioning here in my garage. So that's basically my setup here. Another thing to show you is I have an MP10 and I have an MP40. There's my MP40 and then my MP10 is down here. So I have that on one side and then I have the identical setup on the other side. I also have a battery backup down below here for one of the MP40s. So I drive, just as an emergency, this MP40 through the battery backup if I ever need to. So that's basically the setup as a whole. Um, that's how I do all my automation. That's how I do all my programming. That's how I do all my redundancies on my system. If you guys have any questions, please leave them below in the comments. And furthermore, please subscribe and like to my channel and hit the bell icon. And if you don't hit the bell icon, you won't be alerted if I have further, more, uh, further videos that I'm gonna upload. Also, it'll alert you when I have my live streams. So again, this is the last portion of my automation for my reef tank. I'm gonna do another video, hopefully soon, on my automation for my 300. Um, and if if you have any questions or concerns, again, just leave them in the comments below. Thank you again for watching, and I appreciate the support.